You know, sometimes I'm just at a loss for words. You find a topic, and you start digging into it, and it just becomes insane. I don't know how else to frame this. Over the past couple of days, there's been this story that's popped out about how they're getting ready to release GMO mosquitoes in Florida. The trouble with that is, is I remember that when they did it, like back in 2016, right? Because that's what, that was my memory, was that it was, it was already done, like maybe even prior to 2016. And this is a strong memory, guys, but whenever a topic hits me like this, it, it makes me want to dig into it. So I dig into this story and it gets crazier and crazier. So they're calling it the first release of genetically modified mosquitoes in the United States began this week in the Florida Keys, the culmination of a decade-long effort by local mosquito control authorities to see if a genetically modified organism is a viable alternative to spraying insecticides in the region. For the first 12-week phase, blue and white boxes containing about 12,000 GMO eggs developed by a U.S.-owned British-based company called Oxitec have been placed in six small areas of Ramrod Key, Cujo Key and Vaca Key. When water is added, the mosquitoes hatch, mature, and enter the environment over the next week or so. So over a 12-week phase, they're releasing 12,000 mosquitoes each week. 12 times 12 is 144, and that's 12,000, so 144,000. So these people just announced that they're releasing the 144,000 in the Bible, the 144,000 are 12,000 each taken out of the 12 tribes of Israel. These men were men who during the tribulation were going to come out under the earth and spread the gospel and they never had sex. They are virgin, okay? So there's 144,000 virgins that come onto the scene and, and preach the gospel during the end times. And what are these eggs doing? Well, they also are virgins and they're coming onto the scene, but they're gonna spread this infertility. It's very strange. And they don't pick these numbers by accident. A small vocal group of Florida Key residents have fought the release of what they call mutant mosquitoes since the project was announced, and they are incensed. Our opposition has been long and strong, said Barry Ray, the executive director of Florida Key's Environmental Coalition. We live here, this is our home, and they're forcing this down people's throats. The only thing you can do legally at this point is stand in your yard with an insect fogger, said Mara Daly, a resident of Key Largo, Florida, who has fought the release for eight years. You can't touch a box. You can go fog the shit out of your own yard if you don't want to be part of the trial. The Florida Keys Project, greenlit by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in May of 2020, was approved to release up to 750 million genetically altered mosquitoes in 2021 and 2022. The program's target is an invasive species of mosquito that carries several potentially deadly diseases, including yellow fever, dengue, and Zika. Hmm. The rapid spread of Zika became a worldwide public health emergency in 2016 after an alarming spike of babies born with abnormally small heads, a condition called microcephaly, to mothers infected with Zika in Brazil and French Polynesia. Okay. At first I was like, so 2016 is the Zika outbreak, so maybe that's what I was confusing. If successful, up to 20 million more male mosquitoes could be released during the height of the mosquito season this year. They were cleared to release 21 million mosquitoes, and yet they're releasing exactly 144,000 male mosquitoes. Oxitec's solution to the problem is OX5034, a 2.0 version of its original modification. Unlike version 1.0 designed to kill all offspring, the newer model has been genetically altered to pass along a lethal gene that only kills females. The kill switch is triggered in the larval stage of the female's growth, well before hatching and growing large enough to bite and spread disease. The second generation of the mosquito allows us to target only the females and allows the males to continue to go and do more of their work, which helps effectiveness. Only females that are grown in an environment with antibiotics in the tetracycline family will live to mate and give birth. Those females are kept in the Oxitec production facility in Oxford, England. So here we have like the Jurassic Park moment, you know, where the dinosaurs use the amphibian gene to switch their sex. And you know, there you have Ian Malcolm saying, nature finds a way right? Nature always finds a way. Eggs they produce are shipped to Florida for release, but since there are no antibiotics in the release boxes, just food and water, the only X5034 mosquitoes that will survive and fly away are male, 
Rose explained. Once mature, the GMO males mate with local wild females, passing along the lethal gene that makes their female offspring die. OX5034 male mosquitoes can survive for several generations or about three to four months, passing along their modified genes to subsequent male offspring. And so everybody has the same old complaints and objections to this, and that is generally we haven't done enough experiments on this, we don't know what the long-term effects are of it, and you keep saying that gene modification doesn't survive in multiple multiple generations of mosquitoes, but it clearly does. So while I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on, I found out that it not only did the Zika outbreak happen in 2016, <laughs> but 2016 is also the year that they released all of these GMO mosquitoes into Brazil. And as they so love to do, it's a little bit difficult to determine chicken and egg here. Like what came first, the Zika outbreak or the GMO mosquitoes? Now, obviously, according to the mainstream media, you know, the Zika outbreak started just before this. But, well, you guys have been listening to my channel long enough to know what I think about coincidence. And one would have to say, coincidentally, they released the first GMO mosquitoes into the world in Brazil in 2016. And coincidentally, 2016 was when the majority of the Zika outbreak happened. It's just a coincidence. Remember, guys, correlation is not causation. So back in 2016, they released all this stuff into the wild in Brazil. And how did it turn out? A highly contested study by Yale University that Oxitech had a problem with. So I want to put that out there. Oxitech disagreed with the findings of Yale University's study. But Yale University study found what? That the GMO modification that they did to the mosquitoes was actually passing all the way down the line into future mosquito progenies. And they said that that was, of course, impossible. A field experiment in Brazil that deployed genetically modified mosquitoes to control wild populations of the pest may be having unintended consequences according to a genetic analysis of mosquitoes in the area. It appears the engineered stock has bred with wild mosquitoes and created viable hybrid insects, scientists reported in scientific reports last week. Huh. So, here we are again, talking about modifying genetics. And here we are again, people telling us that it doesn't carry on. Oh, it's not going to carry on. It doesn't permanently change genetics. Blah, blah, blah. And here we find they don't know what they're talking about yet again. Of course, Oxitech is like fervently fighting this narrative, though. They did not like the fact that people were saying that. And here you can find out why, because as they were releasing these mosquitoes into Brazil, they were running studies, hopefully getting that contract in Florida. Now, when I'm thinking about how this company is conducting itself, it's starting to seem a little bit like all the companies I've covered who were financed by William Gates of Hell. And what do you know? You go to entrepreneur.com, Bill Gates-backed company releasing over 100,000 GMO mosquitoes. Actually, they're releasing 144,000. And this is a Bill Gates-backed company, along with every other shit company on the planet Earth. You guys, poison our crops. Genetically modify our insects, take away our food, our meat, force us to use his operating system, monopolies on everything he touches, involved in every topic I dig into, every single topic that is to the detriment of the human race, Bill Gates is involved in it. I am sick to death of finding Bill Gates at the end of my rabbit holes. It's like you find a leprechaun in a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. At the end of a conspiracy rabbit hole, you find Bill Gates in a purple sweater. But what do you guys think? Did we hear about this already? Am I just confusing Brazil with Florida? This is a very strange topic. Another Bill Gates company doing another thing that is, we'll say, involved in another controversial activity that could once again negatively affect the population of the world and is once again being done to citizens of the United States of America against their will. The people in Florida don't want it. They got a quarter million signatures on a change.org petition about this. They don't want it in Key West, Key Largo, in the Keys. They don't want it. And yet this company is stepping in to force it on people, and they got the okay through a government agency, the EPA, so they went around the people. Isn't it funny how all the companies that Bill Gates is seed funding, they all have the same tactics, the same underhanded, sleazy tactics. A little crazy. Anyways, guys, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you later.